Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. Uh, today I'm going to talk about variables. Um, I started a new Java class within my variables uh, folder. I want to show you a little shortcut on the making the main method. Um, it may not be good. This might be for the more advanced people. You know, as a beginner, it's probably good to get in the habit of typing it in just to really get the feel for how uh, to make a complete program. But right here, if you which method stubs would you like to create? If you did this and finish, it automatically creates the main method for you, and it'll have a comment of a to. Uh, and when it's to do in capital letters, they'll have a little checkbox right here, and that's real important when you write a huge document and you're not sure how certain things flow. So you might need to come back to a few things. Um, and this to do thing is great because you can see on the side uh, there's a check mark, or even here there's a little blue mark, and you need to go back there and look at the code. Um, for now, uh, a way to delete a line is just click on the line and do control D and it will delete the whole line for you. Another thing I like to do is go over here as close to the line as you can right click it and say show line numbers and that way you can kind of keep track of what line you're on that's kind of beneficial but we're gonna get into I'm gonna get into integers and floating point numbers today. An integer is pretty much a number with no fractional part and floating points have fractions. Um, so if you are, and there are four types of uh, integers, there are bytes, there are shorts, there are ints, which is usually the, the main one people use, and then there's long. Um, a byte uh, is eight bits, uh, don't worry about all these errors because I'm not writing s syntax code. I'm just trying to display what they are. So 8 bits. Uh, short is 16 bits. An int is 32 bits. And a long is 64 bits. Um, let me comment this out just so I don't have all these errors. And to figure out the number that it can hold as uh, before you have to move up to the next one. Let's say a short, or let's say a byte. I can do this one in my head. All right, so if it holds 8 bits, what you want to do to see the maximum number is 2 raised to the 8, which is 256. And since these are negative and positive it's going to be the range will be from negative 128 to positive 127 and that covers 256 uh, available numbers um, but that bytes don't do you too much good if you're trying to program with numbers um, integer is the most common one uh, that is 2 to the 32nd which is Four trillion something. So your range. I'm um, looking at a book right now. The range is from negative two million or two billion and one hundred and forty-seven million and some change, and it goes up to two billion one hundred and forty-seven million. So I'm going to show you how to declare an integer value. So let's just say first you need to declare the the type. So int, and then you want to give it a variable name and I'm going to give it a name just ID and you want to say equals which is an assignment and you put in a dig uh, a number and it can't have fractions because that will give you an error let's just say my favorite number is 9 and to close this off semicolon so that is a very valid uh, statement in Java but if I ran this program nothing would happen so pretty useless program. Um, there's another way you can do it. You can say int id and just declare the variable name and assign it in another place and that's very legal too. Uh, 
in this situation it would have been just best to say equals 9 and if I wanted to do a system dot out dot print line uh, no quotation marks um, just put in the variable name ID and let's see what happens hit run and it printed 9 down here so that's a really cool way of not having to say print if you said print 9 let's see what happens well it'll still print 9 um, as an integer or you can print it as a string but being able to print out the variable name is very handy uh, let's declare another variable uh, first let's just get into the shorts um, excuse me, not the shorts, the floating points. I'm losing my mind. It's been late tonight. So what a floating point is, is uh, numbers with fractional parts to it. So pi, for instance, is a huge uh, floating point number that can't be represented completely anywhere in the world, but especially not on the computer. So there are two types standard float and let me comment this so I can do the same thing I just did float and then there is also a double this is a 32 bit and double is as you can guess a double of what a float is this will have seven the float will have seven significant digits And a double will have 15 significant digits. Uh, if you are writing a huge program where space, the memory, is a big deal, worrying about what you declare as a float and double would be important. But for writing these small programs, um, for me, I always just put it as a double just in case. Um, that's a lazy programmer way of doing it, but uh, for these tutorials, you will not have to worry about how much memory you're using up. So I'll show you how this works. Let's declare a double. Um, let's say, uh, hmm. let's say my grade. And a way to uh, the customary way of doing naming a variable is try to name it something that when you see it, it will remind you of what it represents. So sometimes people like to say double x equals, and you'll kind of later on down the road forget maybe what that x represents. So name it something you'll remember. I'm going to say my grade, I'm trying to give it a fractional uh, thing. Let's say. I got a 89 out of a hundred okay so I'm not even sure what this is going to print out if it's going to print out 0.89 or 89 over 100 it's been a while since I messed with this uh, just simple primitive data stuff let's see what happens system dot out dot print line my grade Close that with a semicolon. Let's see what happens. 0 .00. 0. Hmm. So, let's see what happens. Maybe I have to cast this. Oh. Maybe I have to put. Well, okay. Right now I have two integers dividing each other, and it's less than zero, the, the amount, because it should be 0 0.89. Well, it's going to just take, when you do division back in elementary school, you divide and you get the how many times it divides plus the remainder. Well, right now it, do, it, it doesn't look at the remainder, it just looks at the division, and it doesn't even go into it, so it's going to give you a zero. So one of these at least has to be a floating point 
uh, number for it to give you the correct answer. So if I just put point zero, um, I shouldn't have to do it for both of them. I should just have to do it for that. That should give me point eight nine. Okay, there we go. So if you're dividing two integers without any decimal points, it's going to give you a zero for that case. Um, so you want to put this point zero, or you can put an F, which means float, and that will also give you. Wow, that gave me a very weird digit. Well, the point zero was a quite a bit closer, so stick with that for now. Let's say that this was over a hundred. Let's say it was one fifty. Uh, that should be one point five, but it if they're both integers, it would probably just give me a 1.0 at the bottom. And it does. So make sure you got a 0 .0 somewhere. And you get 1.5. Or, this is a couple tutorials I had too. You can do a cast, and we will cast this to a double. This is perfectly legal too, and that's saying that this 150 uh, is a double, and now it should also give me 1.5, hopefully, so I don't look dumb, and it did. So there are your two ways of, your two uh, numeric storing things, the integers, which are bytes, shorts, ants, and longs. Um, long would be the longer numbers and and this is pretty much your standard what you save stuff in and short and byte are a little bit smaller uh, memory slots and then float and double are what you want to save your uh, your fractional numbers into um, like I said I always use I pretty much stick to double in it unless memory space is a problem there then you have to kind of you know work with it a little bit but don't worry about that right now and the next one I will probably get into what characters are uh, the next video um, they're very related to a character is just a letter but they're very related to the int um, uh, data type so I will talk about that Please subscribe to these videos and I will try to keep posting them. Thank you all very much for watching and have a good one.